All across Russia today, voters headed to the polls to cast their ballots in that country's presidential election. But even before the final votes are tallied, the outcome is already clear. President Vladimir Putin was re-elected to his fourth six-year term. As of 9 p.m. in Moscow, the turnout was just over 60 percent, and early returns show Putin received more than 70 percent of the vote in a field that technically had eight candidates. For more, I'm joined by Neil McFarquhar, Moscow bureau chief for The New York Times, via Skype from Moscow. So, Neil, since there's been no real uh, question about who was going to win this election, I understand that there's been a lot of emphasis on the number of people who would actually turn out to vote. Can you talk a little bit about what Putin's people have been doing today to make sure that there is adequate turnout? Well, they tried to turn the whole thing into kind of a carnival or a festival, and they left it up to the local authorities um, at how best to do it. I mean, the general theme was kind of like putting other things on the ballot, like school issues to get parents to turn up or making it career days at schools. Some of it was fun stuff, like there was one clown at a at a polling station in Moscow that was shouting out questions, questions about Russian history, and if you answered them correctly, you got a free chocolate bar. So what do we know about how many people did turn out and, and who turned out? The exit polls indicate that uh, the voters skewed towards um, the older voters. Uh, young didn't turn out, which was kind of expected. You know, the, um, when you talk to them, they kind of say, you know, we know what the outcome is going to be and, the, the, you know, who we vote for is going to have no effect on our lives, so, so why bother? Did Putin have any real opposition? Not that he allowed to run. Um, the main candidate who sort of tried to set up a national organization run was Alexei Navalny, who's an anti-corruption campaigner and the most vocal critic um, of the Kremlin. And he was barred due to various fraud convictions that everybody thought were um, politically motivated. And, and it's, just, it's a kind of funny thing, because Putin, even if he had run a genuine election, he probably would have won, because he's, he's very popular. But he has always sort of mistrusted elections ever since he was a campaign manager um, for um, the mayor of St. Petersburg in 1996, and, and the mayor lost the race. And so he's had this sort of inherent distrust of the surprise of elections and, and never really liked them. Here in the U.S., there's obviously no shortage of news about Russia between the nerve agent attack in Britain and the meddling in our elections. I mean, how are all those issues and stories playing out in Russia? You know, they sort of play into the into the narrative that, that Putin likes to press that, you know, Russia is this besieged fortress um, with, with people trying to attack it um, from all sides and for all reasons. I mean, you name the, the, the poisoning attack, for example, there's been zero acknowledgement and there will be none that Russia might have been responsible. It's always like, you know, the West set this up to try and make Putin look bad right before the election. It's always this sort of idea that Russia is a, is a, is a scapegoat and uh, whenever Russia tries to get up off its knees, the world is there waiting to knock it down. I know that Putin didn't really campaign much, but did he promise anything for this next term? I think he actually attended one campaign rally, um, and he just doesn't really like the process. And he did, you know, he sort of laid out what could be called his uh, vision for the, his next six years, um, and he spent a lot of time talking about social programs, which, of course, people want to see improved in terms of pensions, medical care, etc., but he didn't specify um, how he would pay for it. And then he famously spent, you know, the second half of the speech just talking about all these incredible weapons that Russia had developed that, you know, sort of nuclear cruise missiles and the like that could override anything the Americans have. So it's all about, been about, you know, sort of national security and, and rallying around the flag. All right. Neil McFarquhar from The New York Times, thank you so much. Anytime.